Okay. Hey guys, welcome to the ministry podcast.com. I've got a buddy here, an interview with uh, Chris Viasana. And uh, this guy, we've been doing ministry for uh, quite a few years now. I uh, met him when he was in high school and uh, we we're doing concerts and stuff and having a good time with that. And, uh, you know, over the years, uh, we just been rubbing off on each other and, and, you know, loving Jesus and growing and, um, you know, uh, you know, actually, uh, you know, holding each other accountable and, and, um, you know, God's used Chris to do some cool things. And what I really wanted to talk about is missions. You know, um, Chris has got a heart uh, for evangelism and missions. And uh, so you've done, you got to do some cool stuff overseas. And, and you know, you're also working with the church uh, here in Houston. And uh, so, so what are some of the things that you've seen God do um, with missions work? Okay, cool. So uh, what was really funny about whenever I started doing missions is um, God just kind of saved me out of, not really a Christian background. Someone gave me a Bible, long story short. I opened it up. I read the words of Jesus. I got rocked. And so for me, everything that I read in the Bible was the context of what Christianity was supposed to look like. Crazy, right? I know. It was kind of <laughs> wild and out there. but um, And so whenever I begin to read the words of Jesus, and he'd say things like, if you want to follow me, sell everything that you have, give it to the poor, and then come and follow me. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> And, you know, I'd read the book of Acts and I would just see the way that they would go out and they would just be sent, um, you know, they would have these communities that were really organic and they would like love each other and they would, you know, encourage one another and they would like follow the apostles teaching and doctrine and they would just, you know, like they would read the scriptures out loud to one another and just really fall in love with the Lord and they would love mm -hmm. all of the brothers, they would love all the lost. So I'd see this and this began to set the context for me in, okay, so this is what life in Christ looks like. Cool. So this is what we're going to start doing. And so whenever uh, I think that the main mission statement that fell into my life as soon as I met Jesus was Jesus has set me free. He's set like he's broken the chains off of my life. I want people to know that same bondage breaking power. And so this is what yeah. I want to go to. I want to go to the ends of the earth and I want to share the gospel. I want to share this bondage breaking power of Jesus with everyone that I can possibly meet. Yeah. And so whenever I graduated from high school in 2007, at the age of 18 years old, not really knowing what it looked like, because at that point, I didn't even necessarily know that I was supposed to be going to church as we know it today. I just knew it. I mean, I had community. There were believers in my life. Then we shared, you know, like uh, a lot um, and just a really organic kind of book of Acts sense. Um, not that I didn't want to go to church. I mean, obviously <laughs> now, you know, I'm really involved. But um, I just didn't necessarily know that that was something that was available and something that I was supposed to do. So anyways, whenever uh, I was 18, I just took off with some friends. So the first place that we go is to India. I know, yeah. taking baby steps, <laughs> right? Um, and so we're just like, hey, where is there a ton of lost people other than everywhere around us? Um, oh yeah, how about India? <laughs> and so we just go to India and uh, we began to, um, we had some contacts, uh, thank the Lord, just because he has the most incredible network as the body of Christ. Right. And so we begin to work with uh, David Day Cigar with Heaven Believers Assemblies, uh, which is a very small village outreach ministry where they have native missionaries um, that they have won out of Hinduism that they then disciple, train up, and then send out. Um, to these, to their home village blocks where they go and they take three villages and they just are the evangelists and they go and they share the gospel by bicycle, or by foot or whatever. And so we just got to sit under these people and see the way that they did things and to share the gospel. Anyways, long story short, God loves to show Hindus the power of Jesus. And he showed it to them through healings and through signs and wonders. He showed it to them by... Um, I'm mean, just like rocking their worlds. Even as we were there, um, people had dreams that we were coming. Oh, and so when we got to the villages, they would say, we had a dream that you specifically, I saw you in my dream <laughs> and you were going to come and, and tell us about, you know, like these other things were like, right. Cause that's yeah. exactly why we're here. So, oh, man. and it was so incredible. So, I mean, we just began to see the, what we're reading in the Bible happen in real life. Yeah. And, um, and we knew nothing. I mean, we weren't, you know, like, I mean, we just had the scriptures and we, right. we had a love for Jesus and we didn't have right. anything else. Amen. Amen. That's so good. So uh, Chris has, you know, done a number of different uh, 
you know, missions trips and, and mission work uh, overseas, but as well, you've got to do some stuff, you know, locally uh, in Houston and, and you're invo involved with Antioch. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So after about three years of doing mission work overseas in a few different countries, um, I wound up back here in the United States. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and uh, love it here. Um, and started... I guess now having been acclimated a little bit more towards the Christian culture, had a desire to see what I was, re you know, I mean, I guess I felt like I was coming against a lot of, uh, not a lot of, but just like some resistance to why can't we just live in this like beautiful life with Jesus? Why can't we right. have this organic community? Right. Why does there have to be all of these politics? And so I come home and, um, I guess I begin to get with friends and we, we start this thing that we wind up calling the Jesus party. Yeah. Basically we come together, we worship the Lord, we go out, we do evangelism, we bring these people back, we disciple them. It was incredible. I and mean, people, it was the first time I saw people get spontaneously saved. I'm talking yeah. homosexual prostitutes, Wiccans. Mm -hmm. I mean, like people covered from head to toe in gang affiliated tattoos come in yeah. and they would see us worshiping Jesus and they would burst out and ask Jesus to come in and Amen. like, just like pull, like, who is this Jesus that you guys are yeah, worshiping? Yeah. Because I've heard so many people talk about Jesus, but it is nothing like the guy you guys are talking about. Who mm -hmm. is this guy? And so people would spontaneously get rocked by the Holy Spirit. I mean, just like outpouring after outpouring. Right. And it was so cool. And it was just from house to house. Amen. And so I saw this and, uh, and just wanting to, I guess, seeing the natural progression of what I was, again, reading in scripture begin to happen in our lives just because we were letting it and just because we were kind of removing all of the bureaucratic red tape. Right. And we were just saying, Jesus, come in. Right. We just want to live the natural things in the spirit. So I move up to College Station, Texas. And in College Station, Texas, I encounter uh, a church called Antioch. And Antioch, they have that exact same heart, except they've just done it Normally, whenever you institute a system, it's really hard for people to keep the heart of that system. Right. Um, you could have a theologically perfect church, and if people's hearts are wrong, the system is broken yeah. because it's full of humans. Right. <laughs> and so what's cool about what was happening in Antioch is I saw that they would go into each area because it's, it's a big church planting organization. And so mm -hmm. they go into these areas, and they just plant dozens of house churches and those house churches are the bread and the butter of what's happening in this ministry. Amen. And then they come together on Sunday and have a corporate celebration where they just love on Jesus together and just like become a tighter community as a whole and, yeah. you know, like as the body of Christ. So these gatherings were exactly what the Jesus parties were. They were just these uh, organic gatherings where people would be coming together. Discipleship would be happening. Worship for Jesus would be happening. And, um, and then once it gets big enough, because these things naturally grow so easy yeah. because evangelism is happening. More people are coming in. More people are getting Amen. discipled and they're discipling other people. Mm -hmm. And so then they have multiplications where these two become two different house churches. Right. And then more leaders get called up and more places for leadership. And so if you have a calling, it's going to be used. Amen. If you're an evangelist, if you're an apostle, if you're a prophet, if you're a yeah. teacher, if you're yeah. a pastor, I mean, these things are going to get their need inside of right. inside of these communities. And then we all come together on Sundays. And so it's so great. So I play a role of a life group leader. And so what I'm doing is I'm helping cultivate, uh, I'm helping bring together this culture of love for Jesus, mm -hmm. of um, just of discipleship, of evangelism. We're putting together the events. We're, you know, like uh, yeah. getting, just encouraging the community to happen without us, you know? And, and so it's incredible. So what's really cool about Antioch is, I how I speak about it is if, I, as an individual, Chris Riviasana, were a massive organization, it would look like Antioch. Oh, yeah. Because they, um, they have somehow spread across an entire generation of people the same culture of love for Jesus and desire for him and for evangelism and for making yeah. disciples. Right. And it's like, and I've just, I haven't seen that in many organizations yeah. on the like maybe on the inner core group, but not on right. like where everyone is just on the same page and doing these things and has a desire yeah. for these things. And so it's been a really great um, time working with Antioch and, and uh, being a part of what they're doing. And, and cool. Yeah. So uh, if they, people want to get in touch with you or the Antioch, um, how how will we be able to get in touch with you? So you can go to Antioch Community Church 
or I think it's Antioch CC or just Google Antioch Community Church. Okay. And they are in mostly big college towns or big towns. So in Texas, that would be Dallas, Houston, um, Austin. Um, but what's really neat is if you're overseas, mm -hmm. you're more likely to run into an Antioch because there's actually five or six <laughs> oh, yeah. times more Antiochs now overseas than Amen. there are inside of the United States. Awesome. Okay. Excellent. Is there anything else you want to share? Yeah. Just yeah. thanks for having me, guys. And um, just keep following the ministrypodcast.com. Yeah, yeah. And more great content to come. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, if you want to reach us, comment here, subscribe. If you want to reach us on the Facebook.com backslash um, the ministry podcast. And uh, we're on Tumblr, we're on uh, Twitter. So any of these forums, you're welcome to get a hold of us. You can email me at marco at theministrypodcast.com. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. We'll talk to you soon. God bless you. Woo! Yeah, yeah.